Hello fellas! In this video I am building Academy's 1 to 70 second scale F22A. As usual, starting from the cockpit. This time removing some unnecessary details to make space for the resin cockpit from IRS. This upgrade set has a few photo edge parts. To glue them in position I use CA glue. The safety harness also comes as a photo edge details. The original kit part is not bad, but this resin cockpit is a big improvement. It has its own flaws though. As a one step primer and base color I use Mr. Surfacer 1500 Black. The base color is followed by a dry brush with medium grey acrylic paint. Here you can see my poor choice of a brush. It's too soft and long bristled. This is more like it. Stiffer flat brush will be a good choice most of the time. For the detail painting I am using water based acrylic paints. On the seat cushion I wanted to create some texture. So I applied a wet coat of black paint. Then I stippled it with a brush that has shortened bristles. Most of the tools and materials I use you can find linked in the description below. Those are affiliate links and by using them you support the channel without extra costs for you. For the belt buckles I used silver watercolor pencil. I facilitated another pencil to pick out some buttons around the cockpit. Sometimes all we need to apply the paint is a needle. After a layer of satin varnish I applied the decals for the screens on the instrument panel. Those come with the academy kit. This concludes the work on the cockpit for now. Next I'll focus on the undercarriage and the base. A small improvement for the gear legs. I made the hydraulic lines using copper wire. After assembling the front gear leg it is time to do some painting. I chose to do my own mixture for the base coat. Later I discovered a very good color from Tamiya for this job. It's called Insignia White. As usual the paint is applied over a coat of Mr. Surfacer 1500. This time the grey version. The kit has great details in the base. To make those details pop 
I decided to outline them with a pencil. To blend the pencil and to reduce the yellow hue of the base color, I applied a thin coat of white paint over the entire surface. Academy provide a very nice set of decals for the side rocket base. It is a nice touch and looks pretty good in the scale. Using acrylic black paint with a drop of thinner and a drop of drying retarder, I carefully painted the various hoses, cables and pipes in the base. For the metal pipes, I used Runefunk steel from Citadel. To highlight the black, I employed once again the grey watercolor pencil. This nice rib structure will benefit from some highlighting as well. That's why I applied off-white base color earlier. Now I can use a very bright white acrylic paint to add subtle highlights. It doesn't happen right away, but after a few coats there is a noticeable difference. At this point the pencil outlines I did earlier are very faint. So a panel line wash should bring back the definition and add some grime to the picture. For the initial cleanup of the excess wash, I use a Q-tip. This quickly removes the majority of the unwanted material. To get to the tight areas, I use smaller cotton bud or a dental brush. For the final cleanup, I use a fine brush slightly dampened in white spirit. This is time consuming but very effective. Now it is time to assemble the gear bay and install everything in the fuselage. Academy decided that the main gear legs should be installed at this point, which makes them a prime candidate for knocking off. Although this video is quite long, I was not able to include all the footage that I have. If you are interested in an in-depth version of this build and my future projects, visit my Patreon page. The link is in the description below. For as little as $1 a month, you will get video or picture update on my current build every other day, plus all the previous Patreon exclusive builds and content. Your support is very needed and highly appreciated. Now let's move on to the fuselage assembly. Starting with the kit parts, everything fits together reasonably well. Noting that some cement, CA glue and a few clamps can't handle.
things were much different when I turned my attention towards the ARS resin engine nozzle set. Pet fit was plentiful, so plenty of milliput went towards fixing those details somewhat decently into position. Then I had to remove a lot of material so that the two fuselage halves can close together. I am not finished here, but let's continue with the fuselage assembly. The cockpit tub also required some work to fit nicely into the fuselage, but not that much as the nozzles. I used some CA glue to fix the tub in position and then milliput to fix the gap around the instrument panel shroud. To join the fuselage halves together, I started applying plastic cement in the center of the airframe, making my way out towards the tips in all directions. It was a simple matter of careful glue application and some clamping and squeezing. I decided to place the arrestor hook shut as I see no reason why it would be deployed in an eventful situation. The few gaps that occurred I filled up with Tamiya 2 part epoxy putty and some black CA glue. The same putty I applied in the gaps around the jet nozzles. After the putty was dry but still soft, I carefully trimmed the bulk of excess putty. The rest of the sculpting I did using files and various grids of sandpaper. Honestly, I am not convinced that the little extra detail in the nozzle area is worth the massive effort. After all is set and done, the result is acceptable. After painting the shroud surroundings, I had a few more details to add inside the cockpit. Shape. Namely the canopy opening mechanism. A quick dry brush blended the freshly painted surface with the rest of the cockpit. The ejection seat slides in rails just like the real thing. Finally, I glued the canopy in close position. In case you are interested in canopy masking tutorials, I have a couple for you. Click on the pop-up banner or find the links in the description. I decided against placing the tail planes at this point of the build, but still installed the large locating tabs. A few layers of black surfacer will have to do the job of representing the interior canopy frame color.
a few final bits and bobs around the exhaust and I'm ready to apply the primer. I guess that you can see I used the kit provided transparent bay doors to mask the base. Since the doors are designed to be installed in closed position, the fit is almost perfect. That was the easiest masking ever. The painting stage starts with primer application as usual. A nice thin coat of Mr. Surfacer 1500 Grey will unify the surface and give the subsequent layers a great foundation. All surfaces which are not covered with the half glass paint have light grey color which unfortunately is hardly distinguishable from the primer. The painting was followed by a very long masking session. I started this project with the desire to try and replicate the half glass effect on those birds. They come in different weathering stages and some are almost like natural metal finish, others have almost no trace of the sheen. At this point I'm not sure what will happen. I guess you'll have to watch until the end of the video to see. Anyways. First comes a layer of Tamiya LP11 Silver. I outlined the camo pattern on the surface using black watercolor pencil. Then I traced and filled the outlines using gunmetal color. In this build, the weathering starts before I have finished the painting. I want to make paint touch-up patches, so I mask off some areas and apply different metallic shades over them. First LP11 in ununiform fashion. As you may suspect, this involves some masking. I felt that the camo spots are a bit too dark, so I bleached them out a little bit. After I was happy with the result, I returned to the patchwork.
the result is, let's say, interesting. To make it even more interesting, next comes a pre-shading with Tamiya Smoke. Definitely more interesting. Now the idea is to apply a few light coats of the dark gold grey and dial in the opacity so that the metallic sheen can still poke through. But in my infinite wisdom of using smoke for the pre-shading, I cannot do this because the contrast is too strong. So I had to apply more paint. I will try to dial in some more metallic sheen a bit later. My plan to save the half glass effect is to apply a highly diluted Tamiya smoke with a drop of alcohol chrome in it over everything. The smoke will darken the surface a bit and the alcohol should add the blink. Alright, enough fiddling with the half glass. Gloss coat for happy decals. The kids decals are printed by Cartograph and are very good. So it is the usual drill. Remove from the sheet dip in water, apply setting solution, set the decals in position, remove the excess setting solution and then apply softening solution to help the decal conform. But there is more work involved to get as close to perfection as possible. More of that a bit later. Although there are no FOD covers in the box, Academy provides decals for them. Kinda strange. Now to finish off dealing with decals, I will apply a few coats of GX112 Gloss Clear Varnish. The reason I am doing that is the fact that the decals stand a bit proud from the rest of the surface. Having a gloss coat over them will allow me to go over with various sanding sponges and basically make them to look as if they were painted. With the final 3000 grit sanding sponge, 
I will go over the entire surface to get rid of the imperfections. Yes, yes, I know. Black wash is best avoided, but here we go. I think that for this application the black wash is possible. To be fair, the dark blue wash recommended for grey aircraft looks almost the same. And the deep grey wash that I have is more brown than grey. Who gives them names anyway, I wonder? So on the bottom I applied the wash more liberally and then removed the excess using a paper towel and a q-tip, leaving some streaks behind. On the upper surfaces I tried to be more delicate both in the application and in the excess removal process. It doesn't look too bad, me thinks. Using a sponge and the same black wash, I applied several blobs basically everywhere. Then I stippled those with a brush until they almost disappeared. This gave me pretty interesting surface effect without noticeable texture. The same technique I employed with the Starship Field oil brusher. A word of advice though, while the oil paint is there to stay after it's dry, the wash is easily removable, so don't touch it or use oils instead. Using the Starship Base Lodge oil brusher, I added some more grime on a few selected locations, carefully blending the paint with a brush until I was happy with the magnitude of the effect. Sometimes less is more. This was the moment I found appropriate to attach the tail planes. Needless to say, the glue application should be extremely careful. And it is good moment to blend the newly added details with the rest of the weathering. Next comes a layer of GX113 flat varnish. I gave the plates in front of the nozzles a rub with graphite powder. This was the best solution that came to my mind to recreate what I have seen on the real aircraft. Using ivory black watercolor pencil, I added streaks from each individual fastener. And also from the vents.
I also did some heat staining using flat black acrylic paint. To avoid spidering and other runny issues, I diluted it with isopropyl alcohol, as it dries almost instantly. Using the same method, I applied some ocean grey on a few selected places in an attempt to represent freshly made touch-ups. And now comes the happy moment of putting everything together. All fits together pretty nicely and this step was a breeze more or less. It's refreshing not to rush through the final assembly just to put a video on YouTube. I haven't done that in a while and hopefully this explains the longer periods between my videos. To simulate the metal strut of the shock absorbers I used self-adhesive aluminum foil. Overall, I am satisfied with the final result. Mistakes were made, but that's part of the learning process, which apparently never ends. Please let me know what you think about the build and the finished model by posting a comment in the comment section and giving the thumbs up or thumbs down. Of course, after that go ahead and watch more of my videos. Goodbye. And until next time, happy modeling fellas!